Getting ready to buy or sell a home in 30, 60, or 90 days? Then check out BundleSelect.com to find out how you could save 20% or more on your entire transaction. Save on real estate, lending, and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will compete for your business, so you'll save thousands of dollars by bundling all of these services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. By bundling services like real estate, lending, and title, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Act now, and this new model could save you money on your move, lower your interest rate, or cover your closing costs. Visit BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with the national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker. License number 0046902. Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, Here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you again for joining us. For those that are on our live feed on Facebook, thank you for the feedback, the correspondence. We appreciate it very much. I'll introduce my guest in just a minute. Before we do that, just a reminder to uh, go to reradiolive.com. That's where you can find all the information about what we do, the information, the services that we offer to you, the consumer. And also, download the podcast. That's really important because that way you could listen to the show anytime at your convenience. Now, you could do it right from our website at reradiolive.com, or you could just go to Google search and go to iTunes and just type Real Estate Radio Live in, and you could download that podcast from iTunes or any other place as well. Most of you know they've been following the show for over seven years now. Our focus is education and information. It's really important to me. It's a passion. So we work really hard to have great guests like we have today, content information to pass on to you, the consumer, to help you make wise decisions in and around your real estate of all the aspects. So we'll continue to do that for sure. All right, let me invite my guest in today. It is uh, Dana Dunford. She's the CEO with Hemline. Congratulations and welcome in. Great. Thanks so much, Joe, for having me. It's good to spend some time with you because I want to talk a lot about this is – you know, I love, first of all, I'm a big fan of technology, as you are, too. <laughs> it's great to hear about new ideas, concepts, how we help the consumers kind of get into that realm of we've done things this way for so many years, so how do we take them through those steps to help them improve in the way they use technology in every aspect in life? And for you, it's property management. Yeah. management. So let, let's start by doing this, if we can, Dana, if you could just give the listeners uh, an idea of your background, and then maybe also how you started this and how you came up with it. Yeah, great. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, So background has always actually been in technology and have seen it work tremendously for industries, Um, especially right now you're seeing it with real estate agents, mortgages, brokers in general are using it. So my background's in technology. I worked at Apple and then at the home technology company Nest, Mm which was purchased uh, by Google for $3.2 billion. And so after that, looked towards um, something that my family members actually were looking into, which was saying, we have real estate investments. They are in other states. How do we manage those remotely? And really embrace technology for that. In doing so, Joe, I actually realized that the biggest thing was how do you actually connect them to real estate agents, brokers, Mm -hmm. and managers, and really foster that. So today, I run a Hemlane, which is Uh a property management platform. It's both a combination of software as well as a marketplace. Um, So by software, it's anything that technology can do better than humans. We help automate and educate on that. And then the marketplace is where we connect you with those managers and agents to help with the local management. Even those who live in the city mm-hmm. sometimes don't want to go out to the property right. on Saturday, <laughs> and uh, now they have someone to do that. That's a good point. So your customers, as people are watching on Facebook, and of course they'll be listening to this later on a podcast, who are the people that could most benefit from this online platform that you guys created? 
Yeah, it would be um, so. It would be a combination of both real estate investors who have properties, okay. as well as agents and managers that are looking to manage the properties that they have more effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, as Joe, I think we spoke about earlier today, those who are in the industry that embrace technology mm-hmm. find that it's tremendous for them, um, especially full service property managers. And so, really using the cutting edge technology to make their jobs easier, and also bringing transparency to their owners. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think owners don't know how much a property manager does (laughs) because they don't tell them. Um, And if those owners knew what they did, a lot of them would say, property manager, please take this. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I want to, uh, you know, piggyback on that a little bit. So you're right. I mean, I don't think most people understand the work that goes into being a property manager. And a lot of people, I think just in general, maybe when they just get into that, I'm going to be a landlord, I have a rental property, is I'll just do it myself and save the money, right? That's kind of the first concept people think about. Talk a little bit about, I mean, obviously that's what people think about first, but the reality is, you know, all the different things that go wrong, the legal aspects of being a landlord, maybe talk a little bit to the audience about why that's so important to not only have the right people, but then the right software and platform that you offer. Well, I think today, Joe, actually, when you look at those, so most money actually is concentrated in tier one cities. And what I mean by that is most people with the capital to be able to purchase properties Mm -hmm. live in places like the Bay Area, New York City, Los Mm -hmm. Angeles, right? And when they look at purchasing or where they're going to invest their mm-hmm. money, a lot of them just put it in the stock market. Right. They don't actually say, hey, how can I invest in real estate? Mm-hmm. And part of that has to do with landlords telling them these horrible stories about what they've had to go through. Um, or we've even seen landlords who purchase a property think it's a great idea and then say, I'm not going to purchase another. Right. That was a nightmare <laughs> of a situation. And so with that, what we've what we've seen in the industry is that a lot of them will hand it over to a mm-hmm. full service manager. Okay. And then um, the majority of the industry is actually still managing them themselves. All right. And they complain about it, but they don't change those processes. <laughs> and so um, how do you make it where being a landlord mm-hmm. is a lot easier? And that's that 80 percent of people who are self-managing. How do you make it where you've opened yourselves up to use the tools that you need, as well as the agents and managers that you need to make it a much more successful as well as stress free free mm-hmm. job. Um, actually, I've heard from even real estate attorneys, they say, you know, when you're a landlord, it's not a matter of if you'll get sued, it's mm-hmm. when, it's yeah. only a matter of time. Money. And so how do you <clears throat> mitigate all of that where you don't have those types of questions? Yeah, come up? no, that's a, that's a really good point. Well, how about the, um, in terms of managing these properties, the people that start, there's a lot of different properties you know, they start and it's just a t- typical kind of spreadsheet and I'll, I'll calculate it and this is what I'll charge people. There's so many moving parts, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And as you start accumulating properties, I'm guessing people are starting to realize, well, wait a minute, am I really making the best use of my time? And that comes up in every aspect of our lives. Let's face it. I mean, at what point, what, when do you use technology, software, different things to free your time up in different aspects of our life. I mean, from, you know, the different shopping now, it's funny. I mean, everything's online. <laughs> mm-hmm. You buy everything online. The one, of, one of the things I want to talk a little bit about, though, before I do this kind of move, switch directions, if someone wants to reach you or contact you and find out more about your company, how you could help them, What's the best place, mm-hmm. website, phone number? What's the best place yeah, to do that? Yeah, um, so the best place, I'm actually faster with emails okay. than text messages. <laughs> so it's Dana, D-A-N-A, at Hemlane, H-E-M-L-A-N-E, dot com. And you can also visit our website, Hemlane, dot com. There's a help chat button in the corner, and um, they can connect you directly with me. Very good. So in terms of the way this industry is going, you, you had mentioned in our conversation before, I think, what country was it that 70 or 80% of the people use property management? Yes. So in Australia, um, what you'll see is that over 80% of landlords opt to use a full-service property manager. In the United States, it's the opposite. Only, and stats will vary based on mm-hmm. um, who you talk to because it's such a fragmented market, but the numbers are somewhere between only 20 to 30% 
use a full service property Mm -hmm. manager. And so really the question is why and how do we offer property managers a new way to connect with those owners and provide that trust and transparency so that on both sides there's a win-win and a benefit for both. It is. And I I know one of the most popular topics on this show, I get calls, I get texts, emails, and I say this all the time, is that people are always interested in investing and buying, you know, investment properties. I mean, it's the, Mm -hmm. on this show anyway, it's the most talked about subject. It's the most comments I get. I'll tell you one that's one of the most famous or common ones. I think they'll call and they say, Joe, I really want to invest in property, but oh my God, I can't do it here. Right. I mean, it just makes no sense. The the numbers don't make sense. So we ha- that's why you have all these people buying in Texas and Florida and Nevada and Arizona. I go on and on. I guess my point here is that you must have seen there must be this explosion and growth in this concept of people buying properties and managing more and more properties. Mm-hmm. It, it just, I don't, the last several years, this had seemed to just explode. Yep, and it's tremendous. It goes with the macroeconomic trends. Yeah. And what you see right now is that you're right. Professionals here in the Bay Area say the numbers aren't making sense mm-hmm. here, but wow, in these other areas they are. And so you're seeing a lot of people look at these opportunities outside the Bay Area. And um, this whole aspect of remote management comes up and how do I do it? Or just to your point of saying, you know, they're not purchasing here, but every opportunity is different. So this year it might be that you are in Indianapolis mm-hmm. and then. You might be in Columbus, Ohio the next year because the numbers there are making more sense. Right. How do you consolidate that when you have 122,000 property management shops um, across the United States? You Most likely you're not using the same property manager in both areas. Mm-hmm. How do you consolidate it in one area where you can see all of your properties in one place and also be able to communicate within the same system and not have to consolidate it all through manual spreadsheets? Yeah. You know, one of the things I'd like you to talk to to a couple of minutes, because I think it's really important, I know you feel this way too, is mm-hmm. now that you've started this company, you guys had this growth and things are going really well and you're at this different level where talk, maybe you could just mention, I think it would be very valuable to the, to the watchers and then the listeners and that, what are you hearing most from your customers during the course of the day or the week, the last, like what do they say most in terms of, boy, I'll tell you, Dana, this has been so incredible because of A, B, and C. This has changed the way I thought about managing property because of these things. Because I think I believe, you know, when people hear like, oh, my gosh, yes, that's, this is the, one of the most frustrating things about managing yeah. property, right? Yep. Or why isn't there better software for this? Why isn't there better technology? What kinds of things are you hearing from your customers? Yeah, um, really two things. One is transparency. Okay. Um, most of the owners we have on the platform will tell us, wow, I was really hands-on with my asset. Mm-hmm. Like uh, That's my only asset. I, I definitely <laughs> want to know what's going on with my property. And now they say, I can be more hands off and on Friday night, go on, have my glass of wine Mm -hmm. and check what's going on and know that everything's been taken care of. They love that. And then the second thing is I think maintenance with the day to day. Typically, if you have a small portfolio, you're not doing too much maintenance, but it always seems to happen at the most inopportune Mm -hmm. time. It's 6 p.m. on a on a Sunday night and suddenly, you know, you get a maintenance call from a tenant. You're sitting down for dinner with your family and you're having to deal with it. Suddenly, you have a solution that can help you with that Mm -hmm. to respond, to let the tenants know what the next follow-up is. But it's all based on you as the decision maker saying, initiate the service professional, here's my thresholds, et cetera. And so you can sit back and be a little bit more relaxed in that sense of not thinking you have to be there full time. Okay. And your program and your platform works for, I mean, it, I guess, could it be customized, so to speak, or some people could benefit by using it? Some people uh, could benefit by, by using a more capability, more features? How does that work? So on the software side, we've tried to make it pretty simplified, but still customized okay. where you can customize certain th- features of it. And then it really depends on your properties, how you use it. Okay. For example, commercial properties is a space we didn't go mm-hmm. into, but there are people using it and catering it and tweaking it a little bit for that. Okay. So that, that you have that as well. What is the... We're going to take a break in here in just a minute or so. Before we do that, how do you see this? You know, as you sit here today, your business is growing for obvious reasons. You guys are doing a fabulous job with customer care, 
satisfaction, people are enjoying the experience, they're realizing the results and the benefits of it. Where do you see it a year or so from now, just continued growth? You guys are going to continue to add more features, more value. How do you see that? Yeah, well, I, I, I see a couple of exciting things. One is user experience. Joe, we spoke about this with yeah, Bundle Select right. as well. Having a user experience that is so simplified and so mm-hmm. easy to use that delights the customer, we really look to not just check the boxes, but actually surprise and delight them um, (laughs) when they use it. Um, So that's one thing. Um, And then the other thing I would say is a lot of folks, what what I would hope with the industry is this really opens up opportunities Mm. with market trends. What you see is that their renters are becoming a larger percentage of the total households that Mm -hmm. you see out there. Um, They're not owner occupied. Um, People are renting for longer. They're delaying home ownership. And so having the opportunity, this is the most exciting part for someone to say, I didn't actually think that I could buy a full property. I just put that money into some technology stock, right? I just put it into (laughs) Apple. Instead saying, actually, maybe I can take this money and purchase a property somewhere and have managers and connect with them and but also have that transparency with it um, to make investing a little bit more exciting. That's what really, really yeah. makes me really excited about the next couple of years. Very good. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. Again, the in studio today, Dana Dunford, she's the CEO with Hemlane. We're talking about property management, doing it better, using a software, a platform to help manage that. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, those Facebook followers. Stick with us. We'll be back with you in just about a minute or so. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Getting ready to buy or sell a home in 30, 60, or 90 days? Then check out BundleSelect.com to find out how you could save 20% or more on your entire transaction. Save on real estate, lending, and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will compete for your business, so you'll save thousands of dollars by bundling all of these services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. By bundling services like real estate, lending, and title, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Act now, and this new model could save you money on your move, lower your interest rate, or cover your closing costs. Visit BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with a national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select, Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker License Number 00466902. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you again for those that are following us on the live feed on Facebook. We appreciate that very much today uh, in studio. Our guest is Dana Dunford. She is the CEO and founder of Tim Lane, we're talking about how to better manage property, and uh, if anybody's got it right, she has it right. Her and her company does a superb job. Three years now? Have you guys been three years? Congratulations. I know how difficult it is to start a company, and for you guys to be thriving now three years later, it's wonderful. But you, obviously, Dana, you guys saw a niche, and I love the way you described it, is that you saw a niche, but still you had all these pieces of the puzzle. Okay, we see an opportunity here. And there's these all these pieces, but it takes you a little while to put them together, right? It's kind of, yeah, what does the customer want? What do they need? What do they not need so much? What do they need more? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think um, for those of you who are starting companies or, or thinking about it, um, it has to be a business model. Mm. Um, I don't believe in business plans at all. I don't believe writing something down on a piece of paper and saying, you know, this is our this is our path for the next year. Mm-hmm. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, you have all the pieces and you try to put some together. 
and it doesn't work. Right. A- and you take those off. And how you do it is you listen to your customers and you also try it out yourself. You have mm. to do it yourself to really understand what's going to work and what isn't. And so with that business model, it molds over time. Mm-hmm. And then you figure out what really works. And so at the beginning, going a little bit slower so you can go faster later makes a lot of sense for a lot of businesses out there. Yeah, no, it makes it makes sense for sure, listening to your customer. Let's talk about the kind of the evolution. We were joking during the break, but it's so funny. I mean, it is true. It's like... There's this lot of hype and excitement. We talked around Bitcoin and all this stuff and AI and automatically someone thinks, oh, my God, if I don't implement, you know, artificial intelligence right now, I'm going to lose. And I just real quickly, I, I've got to I was fortunate to spend some time with a person who is an expert in AI and he just enlightened me in a lot of different ways. It's like, Joe, you got to be careful because a lot of it's hype right now. Some industries don't even know how they're going to use it, what it's going to be used for. It's still about collecting data and research. Anyway, how do we kind of bridge this gap, Dana, with in the real estate? Let's stick to the to our industry and the real estate side and what you're doing, you know, for robots, managing properties, (laughs) answering phone calls to robots, showing houses and all that. What's the balance right now, do you see? Yeah. So first of all, I think you're always going to need the broker in it. Mm -hmm. I think you're always going to need the manager and a human component and not everything can be automated. Mm -hmm. And so really how technology should be used is to make that human component foster the communications, the transparency and make it a lot better, but not completely eliminate the human from any sort of interaction that's needed. You have to Mm -hmm. remember you're dealing with people, you know, if I showed up to a property and had a robot show me the place, mm-hmm. like my first question is, how do you get up the stairs? <laughs> uh, like, how does a robot get up the stairs? How does it answer some questions I might have about public transportation that might be close to the place? Yes, I can look that up online, but sometimes, you know, that's part of the sales of it. And so what you have to think about is that technology over time is going to transform and change industries. Mm-hmm. There's a right time and a right place for certain mm-hmm. technologies. I would argue right now we're at the brink of a lot of really cool innovation in the fintech space, like you said, with mm-hmm. Bitcoin, um, being able to do rent transfers much more effectively okay. and track that. But I think there are a lot of things that it's still going to take 10 to 12 years to figure out, and you can't automate the entire process. Right. So do you also think then in the same longs, along the line as this, of the blockchain technology, you're hearing you know examples mm-hmm. how eventually uh, you, know, you really won't need title companies anymore. It's peer-to-peer and all these types of things. Again, depending on the industry, you know, 5, 10, 12 years away before this starts becoming effective and useful? Yeah, and I, I still think that blockchain is it's too early. Well, uh, the, the cryptocurrencies mm-hmm. are just too early right now. People are still investing in these cryptocurrencies and losing money, and their money yeah, disappears right. overnight. That's why these systems have been set up to have a middleman that when there's a dispute, Right. There's something there. And if you right. don't, and it's just technology, it's great for 90% of the cases, but those 10% where you do need a middleman mm-hmm. and something happens where money disappears like this, right. if there isn't a human component, how do you handle that? And so I still think it's just too early right now. Yeah. Um, only time will tell with that and actually being able to prove out that technology. All right. Well, before, again, well, I want to make sure a lot of our listeners, both on the Facebook feed and obviously on the podcast, if someone wants to reach out to you or your company, has more questions, if you want to give, again, the website and phone number or email, whichever is best for you. Yeah, absolutely. Email is best. Um, my email is Dana, D-A-N-A, at Hemlane, H E M. L-A-N-E dot com. And you can also reach us on our website, www.hemlane.com. What I do, most of you probably know this, but I'd like to remind you that, that follow the show, very loyal followers for the last seven plus years. And that is when we have guests on the show, you know, we vet them out, we talk to them, we kind of have an idea what they're, what they're doing, what they're trying to do. And I would just say today with Dana and her company, if you're a property manager, if you have five or six properties or 50 or 100, I'm not, maybe I better be careful. You don't <laughs> want to be flooded, right? But you really need to take a look at this and find out how you could make a better use of your time and energy and resources when you're managing these properties. It's an extremely difficult job. You know, Dana explained it, and I agree 100%. I've been in this business a long time, just the real estate lending side. 
to manage properties is a tough is a tough job. There's a lot that goes into it. A lot of people don't know. So if you're out there again listening to this and you're wondering, gee, you know, I need to be a little more open minded in this. Maybe it is a good thing to do. Would that be something, again, if someone had a handful of properties and they weren't quite sure, they could call you or someone on your staff and say, hey, walk me through this. How does this work? Is that something you guys Yes, do? absolutely. We do that. Um, we do demos and also just okay. property management assessments oh, about what okay. you're doing right now, sharing spreadsheets. We have everything that we can basically um, templates to help you with that to basically make your process more streamlined. I love that. So someone's interested and they have 15 or 20 properties and they could get on the phone with you and you guys could take them through this process, almost like this audit, so to speak, or, or go through and what are you doing now? And then they'll explain that to you, and then you guys could explain your system processes and just really iron it out for them. Exactly. And even if you're not looking um, for a new solution, but you're just looking for advice and how do you improve certain areas and components within your real estate investing, we'd love to help with that. On our side, even the staff, they're all property managers, Mm -hmm. come from some sort of property management background, or personally have investments, Mm -hmm. and so are educated from that perspective and know exactly where you're coming from. You know, the other thing that I like about what you described to me, and I, it's really important, it resonated, is that when you guys started this business and the concept, you know, you certainly had technical background, but then you had someone that came in as a partner that had real estate understanding, investment sides, and you brought those different components in. I guess what I'm saying is, to me, after going through this and living it and understanding, have a better understanding, when you start a business or you have an offer to a consumer, You should understand the industry, but you also need to have someone with a technical background, right? Like if you're going to offer something and you're really, really smart in the real estate industry, you should also really figure out how that technology is going to help the consumer and vice versa, right? I mean, you you had made mention, I think an example is if you have someone that jumps into an industry that's really, really smart and understands technology but doesn't really know the consumer needs that industry, it doesn't Mm -hmm. always work out. Yeah, (laughs) and you see that with a lot of real estate technology, which is why sometimes I think it gets a bad rep. Yeah, Uh, People come into the industry and don't understand Mm -hmm. it and try to build something. The industry just says, this is not going to work. Right. And, and they find it out over time. But you see that happen quite a bit. And in real estate, it is still a relationship game. And right. that is just not going to change. It still has that component. But you do need the technology to sure. foster it Absolutely. and have that trust and transparency. Yeah. Now, do you guys just help people with residential, commercial? Give us your profile in terms of, again, if someone's out there listening and they have commercial, residential, a mix, or all of one or two, how do you guys do that? Yes, yeah, so we focus on residential. Okay. People definitely use Hemlane's technology and platform for commercial as well. Where we lack on the commercial side is just in the leasing process. Okay. Um, we're not integrated into LoopNet, whereas on the residential side, leasing, which is obviously the turnover and, and marketing your property, um, the software is on the top for a residential. I don't actually know of another company at our price point that will advertise your property on over 40 rental listing websites, mm-hmm. making sure you have every qualified tenant coming into there. And then on the short-term side, a lot of people have asked, well, why don't you go into short-term property management mm-hmm. software? I would argue that you know Airbnb and VRBO and mm-hmm. a lot of those companies um, already do such a good job at that, uh, oh, I see. that it's, I there's see. not a lot of opportunity to improve that aspect. That's, so that's not a niche or there's something you guys really want to spend time and resources mm-hmm. on because exactly. they're kind of they're kind of doing a pretty good job at that. Yes, and and we would have to build an entirely different platform. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things to think about if anyone um, who's listening to this is starting a company mm-hmm. is that you have to think about If you're going to go into something else, how can your existing technology already be leveraged? Mm. In our case, short-term is completely different than long-term. I mean, short-term is hospitality, hotels. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, someone calls and a light is burnt out. You bring someone out immediately and you apologize about it. You know, it's hospitality. In long-term, it's, well, that's your responsibility to change the light bulb. (laughs) You can change the light bulb. And so they really are different, even though the asset class may be the same. They're both properties. Both of those have really different Mm -hmm. responses of how you would deal with certain things. Right. So residential primarily. And then what is the mix or is it across the board in terms of single family, multi-unit? And Mm -hmm. do you guys 
Do you have people that have, uh, you know, large apartment complexes? What's kind of the mix of how you guys help these people? Great. Yeah. So 60% are single family okay. homes that are on Hemlane, but that means, you know, people will have multiple single mm-hmm. family homes. The other 40% is multifamily. Okay. Um, we have up to, we have property managers and property owners that have, you know, 80 unit complexes mm. and they're using Hemlane for that as well. So we have a wide variety of professionals professionals within the industry using it. Okay. I also want to make sure because one of the nice things about podcast is people could download it from anywhere. The radio versus, you know, you have a signal, a certain signal demographic or, or not demographic, but geographical location on radio. But the beautiful part about podcasts, we have people downloading internationally and in different places in the United States. So the question is, too, with, with your platform software, can someone use your services anywhere in the United States? Uh, anywhere in the United States, that's correct. We do have a lot of investors out of the country, but oh. their property has to be in the United States. Interesting. Um, so we don't do international yet. Okay. For the actual properties, but the investors will be in Singapore, Hong Kong, anywhere in the mm-hmm. world. In this business, is it interesting that one of the things I thought about, Dana, because you're you know, in touch and you kind of have your, your finger on the pulse, obviously, with this rental business and property management, do you or are you aware typically of you know, where people are investing or some of the places seem to be, you know, a lot of the people that watch the show, listen to the show, mm-hmm. say, gosh, Joe, you know, do you have people on that kind of gives me an idea of a good place to invest? I don't want to put you on the spot, yeah, but are, yeah. are there places around the United States you're kind of seeing and you're saying, boy, you know, it seems to be a lot of activity in these certain areas. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of it has to do with tier two cities okay. that are out there. Um, so most of the capital, the people who are investing are in large cities like San Francisco mm-hmm. or in the Bay Area, New York. And where they're looking to invest are the cities that potentially have larger businesses like Amazon going into them and building their facilities out there. And then the other thing I would say is that just with real estate trends in general, Mm -hmm. what you see is nine of the top 13 markets, cities have moved from being owner dominated to renter dominated within the past five years. And so what you're seeing is that a lot of people are saying, I want to invest in the city. I see. And then what ends up happening is when you start looking, so macroeconomic trends, you're looking at where's employment growth, where's job growth and all of this stuff. And then you say, can I afford this city? And then you narrow down into, well, within the city, there are certain areas that are just out of question, but there are certain areas within the city where these neighborhoods are going to be really good up and coming, and those are great places to invest. So typically, real estate investors who I speak with start at the top and go down. Once I see a lot of turnkey companies going Mm -hmm. in there, Uh. it's too late. (laughs) (laughs) It's too late. If they're they're, they're selling in there, you know, it was good three years ago. It makes sense. All right. We're uh, we're just about up against the time. So before we duck out, I want to thank Dana again. And uh, why don't you one more time uh, give the listeners and the watchers an idea where they can reach you before we duck out. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Uh, you can reach me at Dana at Hemlane.com. That's D-A-N-A at H-E-M-L-A-N-E dot com. Or you can go to www.hemlane.com. Great. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for tuning in today. Again, for more information, go to reradiolive.com. Take care and have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.